Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, or Red Cortez as I like to call her, is certainly no stranger to the political spotlight. Indeed, after the Capitol incident, she inserted herself firmly into the spotlight with incredible claims of the traumatic near-death experience she apparently had on that fateful day. But before I elaborate on that, this video is sponsored by Slug.com. But when I say sponsored by, I mean I have to use that terminology because YouTube will get me into trouble if I don't. Really, what I'm saying is that I am on a pro-free speech alternative tech platform called Slug. I would love for you to all join me there and become a member of my Slug group. We have an awful lot of fun. I have put the link to slug.com in the video description. Please click on it and join me there. I would love to have you. So, about AOC's apparent near-death experience, here's what she had to say a few weeks ago. I had a pretty traumatizing event happen to me. Um, and I do not know if I can even disclose the full details of that event due to security concerns. But I can tell you that I had a very close encounter where I thought I was going to die. There's a secure extraction point um, and a secure room. I myself did not even feel safe going to the that extraction point because there were QAnon and white supremacist sympathizers and frankly white supremacist members of Congress um, in that extraction point who I know and who I have felt would disclose my location and allow me to, um, who would create opportunities to allow me to be hurt, kidnapped, etc. And so I didn't even feel safe around other members of Congress. Ugh, this goes on for 12 more minutes. She has also spent a peculiarly large amount of time accusing Senator Ted Cruz of literally trying to have her murdered. I am happy to work with Republicans on this issue where there's common ground, but you almost had me murdered three weeks ago, so you can sit this one out. Happy to work with almost any other GOP that aren't trying to get me killed. In the meantime, if you want to help, you can resign. Now this is, of course, a ridiculous, dangerous assertion. It is beyond willfully spreading disinformation. However, considering that she was clearly prepared to make an assertion as fanciful and fabricated as Ted Cruz is trying to kill me... <laughs> It's no surprise that the so-called near-death experience she had also turned out to be fanciful and at least somewhat fabricated. For the last couple of weeks, AOC has spent an awful lot of time hyping up what happened at the Capitol and how terrifying it was and how she still feels unsafe around her Republican colleagues and how Trump apparently told people to rush the Capitol even though his actual words were let's march peacefully and patriotically towards the Capitol and also told the violent protesters to be peaceful and go home. But again, you know, whatever. The whole point was to make Trump supporters as a whole seem as dangerous as possible. Partly because she genuinely seems to hate them, but also as the lovely Lauren Chen put it, because they all have the impeachment trial coming up, remember, and she wants to ensure Trump is convicted so that he can never run for president again. That's also most likely why AOC is trying to smear Ted Cruz as an attempted murderer. He was, remember, the Republican runner-up in 2016 and will most likely run again in 2024, and she can't have that. Also, since she knows the majority of the media will not bother to fact-check her because they adore her, she has been able to get away with these manipulative theatrics. Until now. On February 1st, Red Cortez did another one of her iconic Instagram live streams. And after weeks of hyping up how the lives of her and many of her colleagues were in danger from those rioters, she decided to reveal what actually happened in her near-death experience. Only it didn't quite go down how she thought. Here's what she said. I hear these huge, violent bangs on my door and then every door going into my office. Bang, 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 bang. Like someone was trying to break the door down. I jump into the bathroom and I immediately realized that I shouldn't have gone into the bathroom. I should have jumped in the closet. And so I, I open the door when all of a sudden I hear that whoever was trying to get inside got into my office. 
And then I just start to hear these yells of, where is she? Where is she? And I just thought to myself, they got inside. And um, this was the moment where I thought everything was over. I mean, I thought I was going to die. And then all of a sudden I hear my staffer G yell out. Um, and he's, he's like, hey, 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 it's okay, come out, come out. Um, and I come out and this man is a Capitol Police officer. Now, while this sounds all very frightening and heartfelt to her starry-eyed supporters, she inadvertently revealed a few critical pieces of information that have undermined her entire shtick. First, that she was in her office when this happened to her. Now, the way she'd previously painted it, you'd think that she was on the front lines being chased around by Trump-supporting rioters, you know, dodging blows, etc., etc. Only the thing is, her office is in the Cannon House building you know, not the Capitol building, which is where the riot actually happened. And as Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace, whose office is a couple of doors down from AOC's pointed out, there weren't actually any rioters in their building. Which brings us to the second thing that undermined Red's weeks of hyperbole. It was not rioters coming for her, which was what people had sort of been led to assume. It was a cop sent in there to help her. But because that doesn't quite sound dramatic enough, AOC had to play into her base's hatred of the police. But then what, but then it didn't feel right. Um, because he was looking at me with a tremendous amount of anger and hostility. And um, things weren't adding up. Like there was no partner there. I talked to G, my legislative director, after the fact, and he said, no, I didn't know if he was there to help us or hurt us either. Like so many other communities in this country, like just that presence doesn't necessarily give you a clear signal if you're safe or not. And while yes, I am sure that AOC was genuinely panicked, and yes, it would have been very frightening, the way she had portrayed it up until then was as if the rioters were storming her office and she was fending them off single-handedly and that they had been sent there to kill her by Ted Cruz. The expectation doesn't match the reality, so to speak. But it shouldn't be a surprise that AOC tacitly fabricated what happened to her on January 6th. She has a history of representing things deceptively, like the time she staged this photo shoot at a migrant camp of her crying hysterically because she was apparently so horrified at what she could see on the other side of the fence, but it was very quickly revealed by others, not her, that all she was looking at was an empty car park. Plus, all that business I mentioned before about Ted Cruz apparently trying to kill her and her insistence that MAGA rallies were white supremacist events and that immigration detention centers are actually concentration camps or that climate changes are World War II. It stands to reason that she wouldn't necessarily be straight up in her recount of the Capitol building incident either. This is not unusual behavior for her. The real story is what she did after she was exposed, which was, of course, to lie. It wasn't long until conservative commentators cottoned on to what AOC had inadvertently revealed. Jack Posobiec brought it to people's attention and AOC retweeted him with, This is the latest manipulative take on the right. They are manipulating the fact that most people don't know the layout of the Capitol complex. We were all on the Capitol complex. The attack wasn't just on the dome. The Trump supporters planted surrounded our offices too. People were trying to rush and infiltrate our office buildings. That's why we had to get evacuated in the first place. The attempts of attackers and publicly available communications show how they tried to gain access and share location info on finding members for physical harm. It is also very damning and revealing that the GOP is now digging both heels in a discrediting campaign. It's because they know they are implicated so they're pivoting to, again, the classic abuse playbook of, it's not as bad as they say, it was that bad. It's actually worse. Okay, first of all, there were no planted around her office. 
There were some pipes found near the RNC and DNC buildings, but there is zero evidence to suggest that Trump supporters put them there, and the FBI is still looking for the perpetrator. That is a big lie coming from AOC. Second of all, Jack is not the GOP. She clearly does not know what she is talking about. And third, the layout of the Capitol complex actually makes AOC look even more unscrupulous, which Jack highlighted for everyone by providing a map. As you can see, AOC's office building is quite a reasonable distance from where the action was taking place. However, seemingly undaunted, AOC came back at Jack with this. This isn't a fact check at all. Your arrows aren't accurate. They lie about where the mob stormed and placed them further away than it was. You also failed to convey the multiple areas people were trying to storm. It wasn't one. You also failed to show tunnels. Poor job all around. Okay, so look, let's hypothetically give AOC the benefit of the doubt here. While it is very clear that Jack's arrows are not inaccurate, those are where the buildings are and the map seems to be to scale, perhaps there were rioters trying to bash down the door to the Cannon House office building or coming through the tunnels, which seems to be what AOC is implying. I mean, maybe that's why they were being evacuated in the first place. Well, not record according to reporting on the day. According to NBC Washington and other outlets, an alert from US Capitol Police told occupants of Cannon to evacuate due to nondescript police activity. Not only that, according to Washington Post reporter Mike DeBonis and CNN reporter Phil Mattingly, the Cannon House office building was given the all clear within about half an hour and re-entry was authorized. And yes, while I know that WAPO and CNN generally suck, these reporters would have had all the relevant alerts during this kind of incident. Clearly, AOC's building was not in fact, seemingly in danger of being stormed by a mob of murderous Trump-supporting rioters. I mean, you'd think AOC would realize at this point that she was digging a hole for herself and just quit while she was only slightly behind. Particularly as by now, hashtag Alexandria Ocasio Smollett had started to trend on Twitter. But no, she started tweeting what she had stated in her live stream about how traumatized she was by the whole thing and how that trauma had compounded for her because of abuse she has suffered in the past, which I will not go into because it is awful. I'm not taking anything away from that, just to be clear, everyone. And how anyone who is even mildly skeptical of her account of events or of just how traumatic it actually was is literally the same as an abuser. By bringing trauma and abuse into her account of events, she has insulated herself from criticism or fact-checking because nobody wants to be accused of downplaying or dismissing trauma or abuse. Unless you're someone like me, whose job it is to cut through all of this kind of spin. See, it is possible for two things to be true at once. It is true that AOC has suffered awful, unacceptable abuse in the past that nobody deserves and that she has suffered trauma as a result. It is also true that abuse and trauma can be used as a shield against criticism and fact-checking, which is the effect of AOC contextualizing her story within this frame. One thing does not automatically detract from the other. But wait, there's more! A few hours later, it was revealed again by Jack that Team AOC had sent an email to their supporters insisting that right-wing operatives with millions of followers on Twitter were spreading lies and misleading information. And could they all please mass report any tweets or Facebook posts spreading this alleged misinformation, especially those containing hashtag Alexandria Ocasio Smollett? In other words, a member of the US federal government is trying to suppress free speech. I would have thought that was at the very least unconstitutional, right? All in all, it's been a bit of a time for AOC over the past day or so, and I'm interested to see how it unfolds. Either way, it has proven again what we already know, that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, while she poses as an angel, is actually an unscrupulous political opportunist with worryingly Machiavellian characteristics. But then again, what else would you expect from a social justice warrior? If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me. Mm -hmm.